Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Capture Fish. On this week's episode, I'm going over simple rod and reel maintenance for a bait caster and as well as a spinning reel. Let's dive right into it. Bro. <laughs> Look what I just caught! <laughs> That should have been one. Whoa! That was so sick! No way! Are you serious? Are you serious? What? What? Oh my god! Dude, let's go! Simple maintenance on your rod and your reel can really prolong the life of your gear and also really affect performance. Whether you're a Shimano or a Daiwa guy, or you use Bass Pro Shops reels, they're basically all the same, for the most part. A lot of guys will wonder, well, what part do I oil, what part do I grease? I'm gonna show you that, which I need to do for an upcoming tournament, so this is kind of good that we're doing this. And then after that, I'm gonna go over how to correctly oil a spinning reel. The first thing I do is I'll go into the box that you get with the reel. If you open the box up, there's usually you got your instructions, how to break down the reel. That actually gives you a full breakdown um, and all the parts and whatnot of your reel. Uh, yes, there's ways to go down and break your reel all the way down and oil and grease the whole thing. It's really time consuming and very meticulous. If you're not careful, you can really damage your reel if you don't know what you're doing. So what I recommend is just sticking to standard greasing and oiling and letting the professionals do their job. With Shimano, you can send your reel back and I think for $20, they'll do a full maintenance on your reel, which is a really good deal. Uh, despite the pandemic, I know things have been a little bit slow. They're really good on contacting you and letting you know when your reel is gonna be coming back to you. Open up your box and every single Shimano reel that you buy, there is a little tube of Shimano oil. So the Shimano oil right here is really, really good stuff. And what you need to do is you get your Shimano oil. It comes sealed. There's a little plastic covering at the top that you gotta snip off. So you just take some pliers, scissors, whatever, what have you, and clip it just enough. Yep, yep, there it goes. Clipped it a little too much. And uh, you clip it off right there. You can see the oil's coming out. What I like to have handy when I'm doing this is basically a little rag. I'll take a washcloth and cut it up. And uh, you have your little, your little tube of oil right here. So let's do this guy first. So this is a, uh, this is a Corrado K. So you're gonna notice right here, it says open and close on the bottom of your gear plate on the side. Click it down to the open, and then your side section will pop off. If you notice, you look on the inside here, there's a bearing. It's always good, you can use Q-tips and whatnot, and uh, you can clean your bearing off. But for the most part, it stays relatively clean. So what I like to do is, I'll get my dropper right here. If you can see, I'll basically, with this, I'm just gonna, one drop of oil in that bearing right there. One decent drop of oil will do it. If you, you don't want to overload that bearing with too much oil. Then the next thing I'll do is I'll actually remove the spool. Uh, it really helps if you tape your line to, uh, if you tape your line to the spool itself so you don't have to do what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but basically it pops off, you'll see your rod like that. Um, and then you'll see where your drive shaft goes in. Um, what I'll do is I'll add another drop of oil, small drop of oil in there. Yep. So, so far I've oiled that bearing, the inside of where the drive touches, and the last section that I'm going to oil is your spool adjuster. So you're going to see that that's located on the side, that little dial that, that uh, helps tighten, loosen and tighten your your uh, your spool tension. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna carefully unscrew it all the way. 
And you're gonna notice there's another bearing. So again, with the oil, one drop. And I'm kind of just using gravity to kind of rotate it around. So after you get that little one drop in there, carefully thread back on your spool adjuster, your spool tension adjuster. It should go on easily on the thread. You shouldn't have to force it or anything. But a little trick is you gotta make sure that your star drag is lined up because otherwise that could get in the way and it could cause a pain in the butt when you're trying to get it back on. There we go. Really important is when you're putting it back on, you want to make sure that your star drag is right in the middle so it's easy to put back on. You don't want to th uh, mess up the threading on the side plate and then just carefully put your spool tension knob back on and it should, it should go back on smoothly. Yeah, I think I got it this time. Haha, -ha, yes. All right, so from there, I have oiled one bearing, two bearing, that section right there. Now with my little cloth right here, what I like to do is I'll put a little oil right on the end and I'll basically utilize this little cloth right here and I'll clean up my reel. So if you notice, I got a lot of, of gunk in there and a lot of that gunk will kind of build up right next to where your line comes in because that's where uh, that line gets put back on that spool. It pulls up a lot of algae, a lot of mud, a lot of crap that's in the water. Uh, and you just want to make sure you just get all that stuff off. I got one other place that I'm going to oil this reel, and I'll show you very shortly once I get all this cleaned off. Another little thing I like to use is a Q-tip right here, and uh, that allows you to get in the really hard to reach places, um, especially like where your line feeds in. That can always be kind of a, a troublesome place to, to get clean. And, um, that kind of builds up a lot of gunk and crap right at where your line feeds out of. That is looking pretty good. So if you notice, as you turn this reel, it's already starting to feel smoother than it was before. Um, your line thread right here is moving left to right. That is the last place that I like to oil. So I'll just do maybe a couple drops in those teeth right there and then I'll work this left and right for a little bit so it evenly distributes through all that. So I utilized my q-tip, I cleaned all the little spots over there all in between. So if you look, my Q-tip's pretty messed up at this point. Um, I cleaned the inside of this ring, both sides of that ring, with that cloth and that little bit of oil. I'll clean that off at the very tip. There's usually a bunch of guck, a bunch of gunk on that. So that's nice and clean, the very tip right there. drop of oil. Very tiny little drop of oil at the very end. The end of this rod right here is going back in. Like I said earlier, it really helps when you tape your line to your spool because then you don't have to deal with what I'm doing now, but I mean, there's still ways of doing it. So it's back in. Put that side blade back on like that. It should push in before you lock it. You want to make sure it's completely flush and then click it, click it locked. Already the reel feels a lot smoother than it was right before I took it apart. Um, and there you go. Very, very simple, super, super fast, clean, easy maintenance for your conventional reel. Um, you can uh, 
when you tape the spool, you can really you can do a test and see how much like it really actually helps um, when cleaning this thing. Uh, I have friends that will dive very very deep into cleaning their reels and uh, take a very long time uh, to make to take apart everything from like the, your dog spring all the way down to the gears, um, re-oil everything and whatnot. But for me personally, I. <laughs> That's a lot of time, and I've lost small pieces before in, when doing that, and it's not worth it because then I basically render that reel useless until I send it into Shimano um, and get it, the replacement done. But uh, for the most part, that took less than five minutes. I got my Corrado K out of the way. I just got to go take care of two more of these reels. All right, guys. The next reel that I'm going to teach you guys how to do simple maintenance on is a spinning reel. This one's actually pretty smooth, but either way, I'm gonna show you guys for the sake of demonstration. So here you have a Stella. Um, same thing if you guys already have a Daiwa or any other type of spinning reel. For the most part, they're very straightforward and the same. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take your drag star at the very top of your spool. And it, uh, it takes a second to get it off, so just be patient. And it should pop right off. Ooh, that's a good reel. <laughs> Your drag star up top should pop off. Right there, just like that. And that's gonna expose the top of your drag system. So, for sake of time, what I'm, I'm not going to go into taking out my individual drags and greasing them up, but if you guys do decide to do this, I highly, highly recommend that you order the specific brand related gear oil for whatever reel that you're doing this for. Um, right here, this is Shimano Star Drag Grease. And uh, what, I'll, what I'd do and what I've already done with this reel is there's a little metal key and that's a star like wire on the inside that fits in the groove inside of your drag system uh, with very carefully with tweezers you pop that out and what happens is this whole inner system right here comes out and it stacks together and so what you want to do is you want to actually lay it out in the same order that you wash it and you peel it apart and it all lays flat then getting a little bit of grease, you don't want to over grease it. Then you get your grease and you want to put a little bit of grease on each and one of those little drag washers. Stack them all back together, push them back in, utilize tweezers again and sometimes you can just use it with your fingers and you push that little metal bracing bracket basically back on and that snaps back into place. But because I already did that and for the sake of time with this video, I'm not going to go ahead and do that for this one. But I'm going to show you where to uh, to oil it. Again, with my rag, I'm going to go in here and kind of just do a simple, like an easy clean. Oh man, there, this thing has some dirt inside. Always good to clean out your reels. As you notice, as you're turning the handle, the rod's going in and out. And uh, you'll notice there might be a little bit of grease on that rod. So what I like to do is then I get my little rag here. And I'm just cleaning out the bottom. I'm not touching. I'm not touching that that uh, that main rod that goes down into the reel. You don't want to scratch it. You don't want to put any like um, any dust on that thing. You want to keep that relatively clean. So after kind of cleaning it for the most part, now I'm going to show you guys where to oil your spinning reel. So again, getting your specific, your brand specific oil right here. Uh, one of the first things I like to oil is there is a line feeder right here. And some of you may know and some of you may, may not, that actually spins. Um, 
there's a little washer inside there and that spins. So I like to put a tiny little drop of oil in there and that will help that spin a lot easier. What then I'll do is I'll turn the reel so the rod is all the way out and then I put one, again, one drop of oil on that and then I'll continue to spin it. Look how much smoother that got just from doing that one application, just that single dot of oil there. Just by doing that one little drop of oil, this reel just got a lot smoother. Next, the side of your handle, the other, the alternate side of whichever your handle's on, that little screw comes off. Unlike your conventional bait caster, that's not a tension spool, uh, that's not a tension knob, all that is is just a protective plate. And you'll notice there's another bearing right on the other side of your handle. So again, with your oil, I'm just gonna put one drop of oil and I'm just gonna kinda rotate it around with gravity. There you go. Two for good luck for this one, why not? Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> what a little bit of oil can do for a reel. Oh yeah. All right. So with that, so the next thing I'll do is I will actually take off the handle of my reel making sure all your pieces are there. And you'll notice, again, there's another bearing right there. Before I oil it, I'm gonna go clean around it. There's a bunch of gunk and crap and a bunch of dust buildup and all kinds of stuff. Um, it's a lot easier when you do this laid out on a table, um, but I'm just doing this for the sake that I'm able to talk to you guys and also demonstrate. But. Clean that with my little rag first, and then I'm going to get my oil again, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, two drops in that bearing as well. So there's a bearing on this side, there's a bearing on this side, and then I'm going to apply the handle back in and spin it counterclockwise until it grabs. I'm going to hold the top rotating part and then tighten just till hand tight. You don't want to over tighten it. Incredible. Uh, what I've actually, what I've noticed is uh, a lot of pros will actually keep this side off. They will actually keep, like for instance, Jacob Wheeler, if you notice uh, some of his like Shimano's and even uh, I think like Carl Jacobson, um, when he, when you look at his spinning reels, um, some of them actually won't have the side cap located on the side, uh, and that way they're just able to add oil fairly easy without having to remove them. Uh, for me, I just take the extra time and I put them back on. For me personally, I think it just keeps out a lot of the dirt and dust and keeps those bearings really nice and smooth. Proofs in the pudding. Put your spool back on the top of the reel. There's a little notch, which will sit slowly rotated until it falls completely flush. Again, with this whole process, guys, never force anything. That's super important. If you force it, you can break something. So you wanna make sure that you just, everything is super easy. You don't wanna force anything. It should all go on really simply. Drag is back on, and that is a smooth spinning reel. Last but not very least is your rods. Uh, a lot of people don't really do that much maintenance on your rods, because I mean, what is there to maintain? It's very simple. Your eyes are huge. Your eyes are very, very important to maintain. Um, just simple cleaning. 
So I'll get the rag again, I'll put a little bit of oil on it, and I'll go through each one of these eyes, and I will rotate and clean it. And I will inspect each one of these eyes, and especially the top eye. If you guys didn't know, the eyes or the guides on your rod have a little ceramic inlay inside, or a little ceramic ring. Not all guides, but a lot do. And what happens over time, and certain wear depends, depends on how well you take care of your equipment, those ceramic rings can chip, causing line frays, causing you to lose fish. If you don't check them from time to time, it can cost you a, it can cost you a fish. And uh, since I'm getting more and more into tournaments, I don't want it to cost me any money. The one guide that usually goes out first is usually your top guide. Just because you're going in and out of the boat, in and out of you know anything. It's, there's so many things that can go wrong when it comes to um, your hitting your rods and banging your rods up. I'll inspect it, look, I'll make sure that it's nice and all intact and it's clean. So with the, the rag with a little bit of oil, I will go ahead and make sure and clean every single one of my rod guides. Nice and clean. Next thing that I'll do is that same rag, I'll just go ahead and clean the reel seat. And just with a little bit of oil and a little bit of elbow grease, you can literally polish any rod and make it look brand new again. I haven't cleaned these in a while. And uh, just by doing this really simple really simple maintenance right here. You're giving it a, a nice little makeover and making your stuff look brand new again. Um, another thing, if you have cork grips, they sell cork grip sealant, basically. It's, a, it's like a lacquer that you apply onto the cork and it protects it. It helps protect it from water and moisture. It, it helps keep it together, and it gives it like a nice little shine. Uh, I've applied it to every single one of my cork grips, um, and usually one application will last you throughout the entire year. And then at the end of the season, you just have to apply another uh, another coat. But for the most part, that's all you need to do. Yeah, that's basically it. This Corrado K is ready to go. Put it back on this. Uh, this Orochi Double X Bray List. Super, super smooth. Feels like it's just out of the box again. That's, that's basically it. With a little bit of TLC and a little bit of time, you guys can make sure that your equipment is always in tip top shape. It doesn't take that much effort to just add a little bit of oil and really, really help in the performance of your gear. So guys, I made this video purely because one of you left a comment down below and told me that you'd like to see a video on simple rod and reel maintenance. Well, there you go. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Would love to see you around some more. I drop a video every single Monday. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys really like this tutorial and like to see more, or if there's any other ideas of videos that you'd like me to do, please go ahead and leave it down in the comment section below. I've been very grateful because work has been very busy, but I have a lot of fishing content coming up for you guys. I'm gonna be heading to Lake Havasu next month for two tournaments, and I'm gonna try and do my best to film as much as I can during both of those. One tournament is the Bass Nation Western Regionals that I qualified for during the 2020 season, and the other one is the Arizona Open Juan Bass, which I'm really excited about, and I'm fishing that one from the back of the boat as a AAA. So it'd be cool, it'd actually be like one tournament from the front of my boat, and then right after, another tournament from the back of someone else's boat. So it should be a really good learning experience. But until then, you guys keep a tight line, and I'll see you out in the water. Aloha.